Hey everybody, my name is Kristana. Welcome to my channel. This is our custom, custom creations by Kristana video. And this week we're gonna do something that I have had a lot, a lot of requests for, and that is turning a headboard and footboard into a bench. So I have done a lot of these and I'm gonna pop them up here so that you can see. There are a few different ways you can do this sometimes. So the headboard generally is always the back of your bench, okay, the part that's sitting right here. And then there's some times where you can take the footboard and you can cut it in half and make side rails and then build a platform in between. You can cut the top of the footboard and have that be the front, which is probably what we're gonna do today. So I will do a few more of these when I find some more, but there are a bunch of different ways that you can actually make these. I've done them where the top flips up and you can put storage inside. So the possibilities are endless. The concept is pretty much the same. You want to build a frame within that headboard and footboard so that you have a platform to put, you know, to sit on, things like that. So this piece that we're gonna be doing, okay, so I have another headboard and footboard that I have made to this, okay? So I had two sets of this. This is my last set. The other one I had done right here. And this is not even a twin, right? So this is such an older, it's an older piece, it's an older set. I've had this set for probably four years now, probably four years at this point, and maybe a little bit less. Yeah, maybe three and a half years. So anyways, this is not even a twin, okay? So this is like a single size bed. I'm not sure if they even make single size beds anymore. But we're gonna turn this really cute headboard and footboard into a bench. I'm gonna take you along with me. I hope you learned something. I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, this is going to be a different concept, but there are different ways to do this. So we're going to work with what we have here and then I will try to find more so that we can build even more. So stay here. If you guys want to see us do this, we're gonna be using power tools and have all the fun. So stay here, please don't leave me. Don't leave. So when you are making a headboard and footboard into a bench, the first thing that I do is I decide how tall do I want this bench? Do I want to trim the legs off of because they've got legs. Do I want to trim these legs to make this bench shorter or is this the perfect size? And so I'm going to keep this headboard the way that it is. I'm not going to do anything with this headboard, but I am going to build a frame. What I'm going to do is I'm almost going to use this part right here. So I'm going to use this part right here as my guiding point, but <clears throat> You have a few options when it comes to your footboard. I have done stuff like cut this down the center and then I butted this up against this side and then butted this one up against that side and those were my side rails and I built a frame inside of that. The sister bed or whatever, the twin of this one, what I did is I cut along the top right here because I really wanted to showcase the front of this as well as that. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one, but you can do that as well. So I trimmed along this line right here. We kept these, and then what I did is I took the top of this and I repurposed it somehow. That's what you have to do. You have to visualize how do you want your bench first. This doesn't have to be that difficult. So hopefully I'm not confusing you. So the first thing is, again, make sure you know what the height of your headboard is because that's gonna be what the height of your entire bench is, is by going what this is. If you cut this down, then your footboard, you may need to cut it down a little bit. But we're gonna make this easy peasy. I'm going to cut this one so that that is, so it's gonna look like this, right? We're gonna cut this down and that way this is flat. So if someone's putting the, sitting on the headboard and their legs are coming over, they're not gonna have to come over this. So we're gonna make this as flat as we can because obviously even if we do this and we keep that and cut it across, it's still not gonna be flat enough. So I may, I actually end up, I'm gonna cut this and then I'm gonna refit it. 
I may end up cutting the feet of this to make it come down just a little bit. That way it makes more sense so that this bench isn't, this isn't, the headboard isn't way higher than the footboard. I'm gonna walk you through this. I'm just kind of thinking right now, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is trim this. I'm going to hopefully keep this part and go across. All right, that's what we're gonna do. The first thing I did was take my construction T-square and I'm going to mark off where I'm going to cut this piece. So I need to cut off enough of the top that it's going to be, that that footboard will be flush with the headboard so that way it makes sense. It's not going to be too tall. So if someone sits on it, their legs are going to be flush and it'll be, it'll make sense when they're sitting on it. I, this is dark and the pencil mark is a little bit dark as well. So I am going to put a piece of tape along the pencil mark just so that I have some, a better visualization when I go through with my jigsaw and cut this line, I am going to cut along the bottom line of that tape. Anytime I'm cutting something, I always clamp it down to my saw horses. So these are my plastic ones that I told you I couldn't find a while ago. So I'm going to clamp it down. I am going to be using my jigsaw to cut this because there is some areas that are thicker and I'm not able to get my circular saw in that little area between that post and the footboard. So I'm using a wood blade on my jigsaw and I'm going to just use that to cut across the entire piece. Okay, so now we have cut this. Here is the top and I'll probably use this later on. I may cut this down the side and use it as like side things on here. I'm not sure, so I'm gonna set this aside. But now we have the footboard cut and I can visualize, do I need to lower the headboard? And I'm not going to. I think this is a good, this is a really good size for a bench. What I'm gonna do, I need to figure out how deep I want this. And so that's the next step for me is to see how deep I want it. So I'm going to cut some, you wanna use two by fours generally for this next part because this is going to be the frame of your piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put a two by four in the back. So I'm gonna move this for a second. I'm gonna put a two by four flush with the back of this and that's going to start my frame. Then I'm going to connect a two by four from here to the front of this, to so the back of this leg, and then I'm going to connect a two by four from this one to that one, and then I'm going to connect a two by four to the back of this footboard. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create almost a box for the frame. But the first thing I need to do is visualize how deep do I want this bench. Do I want it this deep? Do I want it super far? Or do I want it this close? I mean, that doesn't look good. Generally, as a rule of thumb, I usually do about a foot and a half or so, but also you don't want it to be too deep so that it doesn't fit in somewhere, but you want it to be wide enough that it's going to fit in someone's area or your area that you have, maybe your entryway. You may be using this to have a place for people to sit, to put their shoes on, whatever. Whatever it is that you're using this for, you need to figure out what is the width or the depth, okay? Because this is as wide as it's gonna be. I'm gonna keep the, this, this tall. So now the next thing is to figure out how deep do I want this bench? How much do I want this bench to stick out from the wall? Before we figure out the width, we're gonna start building the frame. So I'm gonna take my wood, and I like to use construction lumber for this. So you can use a two by three or a two by four, anything that is construction grade because this is gonna be something people are sitting on. So I'm gonna measure that little inset of the bottom of the headboard, and that's where we're gonna start our frame. So we're going to line a piece of wood at the bottom of that headboard so we can start building the frame for our seat. So I'm gonna measure that measure three times and then I'm gonna cut it with my miter saw and then after I'm done cutting this with my miter saw I'm going to refit it to make sure that it fits on here before I permanently affix it so it fits perfectly on here I'm going to take my Craig jig drill bit and I am going to drill some countersunk holes so that I can 
just put my screws, my wood screws right into there. So I'm going to countersink these holes and then I'm going to use some Craig screws and I am going to glue and screw this piece of wood to the bottom area of the headboard. Now that I've affixed that first part of the frame onto the headboard, I am going to use my tape measure and I'm going to visualize how deep I want this bench. Generally, I do about a foot. It really depends on where you're putting this piece. Do you want it to be a wider bench? Do you want it to be bigger? Sometimes it depends on what the bench looks like or the headboard and footboard, what they look like and what goes with it. So I did 12 inches for this one. Once I decided on a size, I cut two pieces of lumber to 12 inches, and now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna visualize it by butting it up against the headboard and footboard and deciding if I'm really happy with it, which I am. So 12 inches is really where we're gonna be for this bench because it's a little bit smaller and it may end up being my daughter's. So right now I'm gonna mark where I need to drill a countersunk hole, and I'm also marking on the side because I'm gonna take three inch screws from the back and I wanna make sure I mark on my headboard so I don't intersect my screws. So I'm going to countersink a hole right here and then I'm going to butt it up against the first part of the frame that we have drilled to the piece and I'm going to glue that area and then I'm gonna screw that in with another one of my Craig screws and then that's gonna be the side of our frame, that part right there. I want to make sure that this is as secure as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm marking where that hole is and I'm gonna mark on the side of the headboard. That way I can pull these lines back and I know where I need to put my screws so that they're not intersecting. So this is the back of the headboard and what I'm gonna do is take three inch wood screws and put them from the back into that wood right there. So I'm making a countersunk hole with my Craig drill bit and that way the screw heads will just be flush with the wood so they're not sticking out. So when I put this against the wall, the screws aren't sticking out. So I'm gonna make two countersunk holes and then I'm gonna take my three inch construction grade wood screws and I am going to slowly, I pulsate when I'm screwing. So I'll, I'll screw a little bit at a time. I don't wanna get crazy so I just, because these are kind of pilot holes, but we it, these screws still need to go through the headboard and through that wood. So I go slowly, a little bit at a time, and this is going to sure up this frame even more. Before I attach the front of the piece, I need to make sure that it's level. So what I'm gonna do is take my level and I'm gonna kind of maneuver the footboard to see where I am going to be screwing these. So I'm marking a line on the side and then I'm gonna move that pencil line to the front and that is where I'm going to make a countersunk hole right there. But if you can see, there's ridges in the front. So I made a countersunk hole. I'm going to put my level on there again to make sure when I am screwing it in, it is level. You can never make sure things are too level all the time. So now that my level's on here, I'm gonna adjust it to make sure that my level shows that it's level, and then I'm gonna screw that in there. I am gonna show you later on in the video how to fill these holes and how you can recreate that ridge on there so that way you won't even know that there's a hole in there. So again, I'm going slowly and I'm making sure that everything is level while I'm doing it and I'm holding everything in place and now everything is level, I'm gonna put my three inch wood screws into the front of the piece. So now we check and make sure it's level. I did it on the other side, check, make sure it's level. So our frame is almost done, but I'm going to cut another piece of wood and put it 
going across the front and I'm gonna screw that in and now our frame is complete. And everything is level and it is looking good, good, good. For the seat, I bought a pine board that was already glued. You can do it in sections if you want, but I wanted to do this so it's one solid piece. But we're going to have to cut this to size. So it's either, it's up to you. You could do planks of wood going across or you could do one that's already glued. But we need to measure it and we also need to cut those little areas right there that are sticking out so that it actually goes down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the width and the length of this bench and that way I can cut it to the width and the length first and then we will worry about notching out those areas that are sticking out from the length and the width so that we can fit this board in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure. I'm measuring the length and the width. I'm going to take my construction T-square. I'm going to make straight lines and then I'm going to go in and cut it with my circular saw to make sure that those lines are perfect. As you can see, this board is super tight and that is perfect. That's how I want it. So we're going to put the back of the board to the back of these little areas that need to be notched out. And I'm gonna take my pencil and now I know what the width is that needs to be notched out. And I'm going to measure the depth of that area that needs to be cut. So it's about an eighth of an inch and I'm going to just mark an eighth of an inch on both sides. And then I'm going to mark a line going across so now I know what the width is that needs to be cut out and now I know what the depth is that needs to be cut out and I can take my pencil and I'll just color it in so I know that needs to be cut. I'm gonna do that on both sides and now I'm gonna take my jigsaw and I am going to carefully cut these areas. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna cut each side and then I'm going to just start using the jigsaw and go along where I need to cut and I'm just gonna make little cuts. And what this is gonna do is it's going to allow that wood, it's gonna start notching out that wood if you do it this way. You can do this with a jigsaw, you could use a chisel if you wanted to, you could use a table saw if you wanted to, but this is the easiest way for me to do it is to use a jigsaw. So I'm just gonna keep on making little cuts to make notches and Eventually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a notch that's big enough to where I can take my jigsaw and turn it sideways and just cut that entire, cut along the length of that and cut that little notch out. So you're gonna see a few different things that I'm gonna do here, but you figure out what works best for you, but this is what you need to do to get these little areas out 
and they're not going to be big areas that you have to notch out. So see, I made it big enough and now I'm going to take my jigsaw and I'm going to go along the edge. I'm going to do this again on the bottom part that needs to be notched out so that you can see what I did. So I'm going to fit it and I did it on both sides and it fits perfectly, but we still have to notch out the bottom. So how are we going to do that? I am going to take these and they're going to, the notches are going to fit perfectly at the top, but I'm going to have it butted up against the bottom and I'm going to measure it the same exact way that I measured the top. I'm going to see how wide I need to measure the notch and then I'm going to see how deep that little area is that sticks out. So you're going to see me measure that area that's sticking out and that is the depth that needs to come off for this to be notched out. So right here, it's probably about an eighth of an inch and that needs to be notched out in order for this piece of wood to sit flush and perfect on our frame. Once I have it measured, I'm gonna show you how to notch out that small little area with a jigsaw again. Again, you're going to cut carefully each side and then you're going to just make small little cuts and start notching out that wood until you get a big enough area that you can stick that jigsaw blade in there and turn it sideways and then you can cut the rest of it off. Okay, so here is the test to see if we notched it out perfectly. This may be slightly tight and that is okay. If it's tight enough that I know it'll go down, I'm gonna take a rubber mallet and I am just going to pound the rubber mallet on the piece of wood until it sits flush on our frame and it's just gonna be super tight in there. I'm gonna throw probably a few nails in there with my pneumatic nail gun, but it being this tight of a fit is really good because that means that it has less of a chance of moving and coming out as well. And here it is, the seat of our bench is done. You can see how tight these cuts are. You can see how it is just in there nice and snug and it looks really, really good. I'm super happy with it. We cannot just leave the construction lumber on the side like that. So I'm taking thin plywood and I, it's a birch plywood and I am going to just cut a little side skirt there and I'm going to glue it. So I'm gonna measure the piece of wood, make sure that it's the right size. I cut them to size. I'm gonna glue it and then I'm gonna take my brad nails and I'm just gonna hand nail them because I didn't feel like dragging all my stuff upstairs. So I'm gonna take a brad nail and I'm going to nail it into there. All right, guys, we are getting there. So the seat is pretty much done, the side skirt's done, but what we need to do is we need to level out that front footboard and then we're gonna put some Would You Bend molding on there. We need to plug some holes, but this is starting to look super cute. So I'm gonna take my Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray and I'm going to sand down the front or the seat of it. Um, there's a pencil mark on there, so I'm going to sand that down. I'm going to sand and smooth the sides of the seat. I'm going to sand and smooth the area that is the side skirts. And I'm going to start with a 120, and then I'm going to go to a 220 grip. But I'm going to show you a little trick here in a few seconds on how to fill holes without using a wood filler. 
So you're going to use the wood glue that you have and you're going to fill the, like I'm gonna fill the brad nail holes. So I'm gonna fill the brad nail hole with a little bit of wood glue, just a tiny bit, and I'm gonna wipe it back. And then I am going to take my sander and I'm going to run my sander over top of it. And you can see the hole is going to disappear. And also when you go to stain it, it's going to stain the same color as the wood. So you basically create yourself a stainable wood filler by doing that. It is an age old trick. You can also put sawdust in things, but I like doing it this way because it's finer. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to smooth and level out that front footboard as much as humanly possible so that it's straight as possible. And then we're going to put a would you bend trim over top of it to make sure it looks finished because it's not gonna look finished if we don't make it look nice. So I'm using a would you bend molding. This is the rope trim. And what you do with would you bend is you can stain it, you can nail into it, you can do all the things with it, but I am going to paint over it. But the first thing you need to do is you need to heat it up. And I'm gonna show you here in a second. When you heat it up, it becomes flexible. But once it cools, it gets hard again. So you need to heat it up to make sure that you can fit it to wherever you're gonna put it. So I'm gonna heat it up first and then I'm going to fit it to that front area on the top and then I'm going to cut it with a razor and when it's warm, it cuts really easy. So I'm gonna cut it and then what I'm gonna do is once I have it fitted and know where it's at, I'm going to add the wood glue on to the top of that footboard so that way we can adhere the wood you bend trim to the footboard and we're going to set it down and then we're going to heat it one more time so that we can make it soft again. And we're going to heat it one more time, push it flush. And then I always tape it in place just to make sure it's even more secure. And then I'll wait a few hours and then I'll untape it to make sure everything's dry. And now it looks finished and it's going to look much nicer, more professional. Remember I told you I'm gonna show you how to fill those holes that are in the front so that you can create ridges so no one will know. We are gonna take a two-part wood filler. This is just, you can use Bondo. There's two-part wood fillers and you're gonna put a little bit on a piece of a scrap wood and you're gonna put your hardener in there. It always comes with it. And then you're going to fold them into each other. And you only have about maybe 10 minutes to work with this until it starts hardening. So you're going to push the wood filler into the hole so that you can plug the hole first and foremost. And then you're going to try to shape it a little bit. Don't be too concerned because you can shape it more when you when it hardens and you have a sander to shape it. But I'm going to overfill it and I'm going to make sure that I have enough on top that it's gonna have a little bit of a ridge so that way when I sand it down, it's not perfectly smooth. So I'm sanding down the excess right now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand down the excess to make it a little bit level, and then I'm gonna go hand sand. I'm going to go in between the ridges with a 120 grit, and I'm going to hand sand so that I can recreate those ridges and get any of that excess wood filler out of there. And I'm just gonna shape it and mold it, and this is much easier. It dries super hard, and really, once you put it on your piece, you're able to do this within 45 minutes to an hour. So you don't have to wait hours and hours and hours for a wood filler to dry. When you're using a two-part filler, it is so much faster, it's a lot harder, and you can recreate it. So now we're gonna get into painting this piece. I'm going to clean the entire piece with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. It's a TSP-based cleaner. 
I'm going to go over the entire piece with this and then I'm going to go over it with clean water and a clean rag just to get any residue off so I make sure that I don't have any. I'm going to create some crazy texture on this. I'm going to be using Daisy, which is a bright yellow color, and then I'm going to be using Sea Spray, which is a texture additive. There are directions on the package, but usually what I do is I just pour some paint in, put a little bit of the Sea Spray in there, mix it, and what you want is a almost brownie-like batter consistency with this. So if it's too dry, you can add a little bit more paint. If it's too liquidy, you can add a little bit more Sea Spray. So you can, if you do it thicker, you're going to have harder texture, thicker texture. If you do it thinner, you're going to have lighter texture on here. So really there's a few different ways you can do it, but this is what you're looking for. And I'm going to take a cheap chip brush and I'm going to stipple it. And you can also take it and scoop it and then paint it on and then stipple it to create those peaks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for about five to 10 minutes and I'm going to knock those peaks down. So you're going to see, I'm going to add the texture and then I'm going to go back in about five to 10 minutes and I'm going to smooth and knock that texture down with my cheap chip brush. And that way I have texture, but it's not peaks on this piece. I let the texture dry overnight and now I'm going to go in with colors and I'm going to lay these down all over the piece. Please trust this process. I know I am in the habit of creating stuff that gives you guys anxiety, but this color is the purple that I've been using for a few weeks. It is a one to one ratio mix of Dixie Belle's Amethyst and Dixie Belle's Plum Crazy. I'm digging this color. Man, I love this color. I wish that they would name it Cristana after me, <laughs> but I really like this color. So I'm going to go with some, we're going to do some blues and purples on this piece. So I'm just going to add this purple in a bunch of different places randomly. And now I'm going to take their plum crazy and I'm going to butt that up against all the areas that I have purple on. Once I'm done putting my plum crazy down, I am going to take their color called Peacock and I am going to butt that up against all the areas with plum crazy. There is a rhyme and reason to where I the where I'm laying stuff down. So the purple and the plum crazy, they blend really nicely and then the peacock and the plum crazy are going to blend into a purple-ish color. And then I'm going to go in with Dixie Belle's mermaid tail in the center and mermaid tail and peacock they blend really pretty as well. So there is a rhyme and reason to where I'm placing them. So this is what it looks like. I know, I mean, I think it looks cool, but maybe someone else thinks it looks scary, but we are gonna blend it. So we need a Mr. Bottle, a clean dry neutral brush, a clean rag or paper towel, and a brush for each color. And we are going to start with the purple. We're just gonna call it Cristana. I don't even care. We're gonna start with Cristana purple and we are going to blend Cristana purple and Plum Crazy together. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down a second coat of the purple color. So that way our transition line has moisture. We are going to mist the area. We're going to lay down another thin layer of the Plum Crazy. And then we're going to start mixing them. So you can start kind of blending them even at this point. We're going to mist it. We're going to take our purple brush and we're going to start doing circles and we're going to start just blending that purple into the plum crazy. Then we're going to take our plum crazy brush after we've missed it and we're going to blend the plum crazy into the purple. And then we're going to, because these colors blend really easily, we are going to take our clean dry neutral brush, we're going to mist it, and then we're going to do circles, horizontal, vertical, and we're going to blend those two so that we can soften that transition line. Okay, same concept. So we are going to mist this piece and we're going to move over to the Plum Crazy and Peacock. So we're going to add a thin layer of Peacock 
and we're going to make sure there's moisture on that transition line and you're going to start seeing it's going to make a purple color. So we're going to mist it. We're going to go in with our plum crazy. We are adding a little bit of paint to our brushes the first layer that we do. But now after I do that, I'm going to take my peacock brush and I'm not going to add any more paint to it. I am going to wipe it off. You're going to see me wiping it off because it starts getting kind of muddied with the purple. So as long as you wipe that brush off, then it should be okay. So we've kind of pushed that peacock into there and now we're gonna take our clean dry neutral brush and we're gonna just try to soften this as much as we possibly can. This is not gonna be a perfect blend because we are gonna be distressing it to show that daisy. Don't forget about the daisy, it's still in there. And then we're gonna be doing black wax on here to create a more jewel toned effect on these colors. So these colors are not going to be as bright as they look right now. We are gonna move over to our final two colors that go together and that is peacock and mermaid tail. So again, we're going to lay down a thin layer of the mermaid tail and you wanna keep moisture on this piece throughout this. So if your brush starts catching, make sure you just mist a little bit of water. You don't want a ton of water. And now we're gonna outline it because the, the peacock is actually outlining the mermaid tail. I don't know if you can see that or not. So we're gonna go over where the peacock is and we're gonna add some paint to that. And we're gonna just start blending these two colors. We're gonna start doing circles. And of course, you know, we do circles, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, but these two colors are really, really easy to blend together. So if you are just starting out blending, these two colors are really great or a purple or plum crazy. They're in the same color family. Now we're gonna take the clean dry neutral brush and we are going to just soften everything. You can take this brush and go into the other colors if you want and just soften everything so that the blend looks a lot nicer. Now I'm gonna go in with my Surf Prep 3x4 Electric Ray. I'm gonna take a super fine 10 millimeter pad and I am going to go over this entire piece so that we can expose that daisy underneath and it's going to show the texture that we have created and then afterwards, we are going to go in with some black Best Dang Wax and we are going to make jewel tones. So we are not gonna put a clear wax down before we do our black wax because I want that black wax to soak into this paint as much as possible. So we are gonna put the Best Dang Wax down on this piece, on the entire piece, and I'm gonna lay down a layer of it and then I'm gonna wipe it back with a microfiber cloth and I'm gonna leave some in the edges because we wanna have some shading as well. And this is going to darken these colors and just make them look so, so beautiful. And I'm gonna show you here in a second the difference. You're gonna see areas that have the wax and then there's gonna be an area where there's no wax and you can see how different the colors look. I'm gonna stain the seat of this piece with Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain. It's a water-based gel stain and it is the color Tobacco Road. So I'm gonna go with the grain and I am going to stain the seat of this piece so that way we have a nice kind of earthy brown color that goes with these colors. And then I'm gonna allow this to dry for about yeah, a few hours. It is water-based and it's sunny out so it's gonna dry pretty fast. And then I'm going to seal it with Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. I'm gonna use a blue sponge and I am going to use the blue sponge to seal the piece in. And then after that, we are going to finish it off with some copper gilding wax. And you'll see that in a second and this piece will be done.
I am taking the copper gilding wax, which is an oil-based wax, so you do not need to seal it. It will seal itself. It cures in about 30 days, but it'll dry within about 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, and it won't come off. It'll fully cure in about 30 days. But I'm gonna take my makeup brush and I'm going to add it all over this piece, on the edges, on all the ornate areas, and really just tie it all in. And this is going to look awesome. Okay, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. I have been hanging out outside. Clearly my hair is super windy. So, you know, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is a how to make a headboard and footboard into a bench. And then I also did an artistic finish on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I think, I hope you found it helpful. As always, everything I use will be in the description below. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe. And I will guys, I will see you guys later on this week for another furniture painting video with colorful finishes, artistic finishes, all the things. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later. Bye. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand It's me and you On the road with a couple of tunes And a car for two Hey darling You know we're gonna have a really good time Driving in the middle of the night When the stars are bright Pack our bags and get in that car